Hi, I'm Dan Looker, business editor with Successful Farming Magazine. And with us again today is Steve Johnson, a farm management specialist with Iowa State University Extension. Steve, welcome. Thanks for coming back. Thanks, and uh, uh, today we're going to talk a little bit about uh, uh, how the one of the farm bill programs, ARC, works and uh, how PLC and the SCO works. Uh, can you describe the, uh, the ARC program first? Sure. And, uh, I brought uh, an example of the county ARC first. Again, a county ARC, county yields. We'll use the NAS yields for your county. Ask yourself, are my farm's yields much different than the NAS yields for the last five years, nine through 12? The important thing to remember about the county ARC is that it pays on 85% of base acres. Mm -hmm. It uses a revenue trigger, as does the farm ARC. Also, that it is a reflection of the five-year Olympic average OA, and it's the most recent five years. And the cash prices that are used are the marketing year average, or MYA. It's a look back at the last five years, Olympic average. Throw out the high yield and price. Throw out the low yield and price. And that's what an Olympic average is. Yep, it's just a three-year simple. Right. It's a right. three-year simple average yield and a three-year simple average price. Multiply those together and you create a benchmark revenue. Now, today, if we were to estimate what those potential prices are, We'd say uh, corn around 5.33 a bushel, mm -hmm. soybeans around 12.27 a bushel. Again, um, ARC doesn't guarantee price; it guarantees revenue. Right. So those are the prices that we use, but that's a moving target. We'll show you shortly why that is. Farm ARC is different. It pays on 65% of the base acres. Remember, county ARC pays on 85%. So there is an inherent. Uh, value of county ARC because mm -hmm. it pays at a higher percent. It's same type of revenue trigger. It's five-year uh, Olympic, Olympic average. average yield, throw out the high, throw out the low. It's the most recent five years. For 14, we'll use 9 through 13, and we'll use those same types of prices. Here's the biggest difference between a county ARC and farm ARC, other than the yields and other than the percent of base. It's the fact that if you sign up for farm ARC, you have to combine all commodity crops That's right. it's together on that farm. And again, you, you, we've not really not done that You're not choosing between before. corn and beans no. there. That's all of your... You might not trigger an ARC payment some years because the combination mm -hmm. of corn and beans, mm -hmm. the wheat, and other crops just don't trigger a loss. But with county ARC, you get to keep each program crop separate. And so you can actually sign up corn, for example, in ARC, and you could sign up soybeans in PLC if you... Yes, in corn in county right. ARC, because once you sign up for farm ARC, that's it. You can't pick and choose yes, yes. which right. farm or right. which, which crops are going to be right. in the farm ARC program. So separate ARC, and it's a simple process. I just say ARC has an R, it's revenue trigger. Right. It's different than PLC. PLC, price loss coverage, has a P. It's only triggered by prices. Right. The prices have to fall one of the next five years below the reference prices. That's 370 a bushel corn, 840 a bushel soybeans, 550 a bushel wheat. So the major commodity crops each have a reference price. Cotton gets their own product called the stacks. But there's another interaction. If you elect PLC, then you can also use SCO, Supplemental Coverage Option. Okay, and how is that different from ARC, Steve? Well, County ARC is a lot like SCO. Mm -hmm. They both use county yields. But SCO is using our traditional crop insurance prices as so opposed to... There, and there's no Olympic average in there's, SCO. That's an annual Yep. SCO will, will be an add-on to your existing crop insurance. I don't think it's going to be viewed as a good substitute for crop insurance. I think most farmers are going to use crop insurance and SCO, especially if you're not at the 80 or 85% level of coverage, mm -hmm. because they're going to use SCO to try to buy up their coverage, but it's going to be a county yield. 
and the government's going to pay 65% of the premium. So it has that kind of a cost share effect as does crop insurance. But I think PLC and SCO are going to be one set of decisions. The majority of the corn belt, corn and bean country, I think they're going to use ARC. And I'll come back and show you why I think that is. But the exception might be a farm that doesn't have base acres. Right, right. So they can't trigger a payment anyway. Maybe I go ahead and use SCO because I'm using a 65 or 70 or 75% level of coverage. A large farm. So that, if you don't you know, have a base, the PLC. PLC might be a, a, a tool that I could use. And uh, it, as, a, as a way to get to yeah. SCO. Yeah. because we're using historic base. Let's look at this whole base issue. The base acres can be reallocated. We call it reallocation of base acres. Mm -hmm. But remember, every farm, FSA farm number, has some sort of a base history. When you reallocate, you cannot exceed that historic base acres. Right. And that's an important thing that I think most of the viewers need to understand. What is your historic base? When you show up for a meeting this summer, I'm going to say to you, what is your historic base? You probably haven't changed it since 03. Uh, right. Look on how you signed up for the farm program. We call that the DCP, or get a copy of the FSA form EZ-156, and it has historic corn, soybean, wheat types of base acres. So if you've changed your cropping rotation at all over the last 10 years, then you may want to consider Four years, 9, 10, 11, 12. Well, well, I, There's I, only four years. I know, no, I, I meant from the last time you could do this Correct. in 2003. But we're only going to be able to reflect four years. Right. 9, 10, 11, and 12. You need to get copies from your crop insurance agent of what did I plant on that farm in 9, 10, 11, and 12. If you planted more corn acres and you'd been in a corn soybean rotation, you might want to reallocate to a higher corn base. So I think those are things that you can do this summer. Again, enrollment at FSA, you know, is it this summer? I don't know. Um, FSA will be busy with other types of farm programs, whether it be livestock disaster, conservation programs, acre certification. But we might see some information out about base and yield and how does that work. And I would encourage your viewers to focus on base. Mm -hmm. Don't get all, all the yield information yet. It's kind of early. But then begin to understand how is ARC and PLC different. It is a one-time choice. In fact, I saw that FSA is using the term unanimous, which means the operators and the landlords agree. Mm -hmm. This is the farm program that we're going to sign up for. So I think a farm operator that doesn't own the farm has to start thinking about getting signatures. And there are several reasons why this is really important, Steve. Are there, if you uh, don't get agreement from your landlord, what happens? If you do not get the signatures by the allocated timeline, then that farm is not in ARC or PLC in 14. Mm -hmm. Beginning in 15, the default is the farm is enrolled in the PLC program. Right. So I think there's going to be a timeline that people are going to want to adhere to. I don't think the timeline is anything more than 8, 10, 12 months out. But then you get into this whole issue of yields. You need your farm yields. If you're in farm arc, you're going to need your farm's yields. If you're in PLC, you're going to need your farm's yields. If you're in the county arc, we're going to use the county yields to determine mm -hmm. what those payments are. So again, I think in an overview, you start with understanding the difference between arc and PLC. You understand that SCO a shallow loss program, a crop insurance product, could attach to a PLC decision. But if you enroll in ARC, then you don't qualify for SCO. And SCO operates a lot like county ARC because it uses county yields. And then lastly, in this next slide, I think a lot of the issues are about prices. Um, I think when you see how the reference prices work, understand that ARC is going to use the last five years for the 14 sign up. Marketing year average cash prices, those are coming from the National Ag Statistics Service, MYA, Olympic average, OA, throw out the high, and you can see corn and soybean prices. We're going to throw out, you know, those uh, low prices. Uh, we're also going to have some plug yields that it can't fall below the reference price for right. uh, yeah. the, the, the uh, excuse me, it doesn't fall below 
the uh, plug prices. Uh, so we'll have plug prices and plug yields that'll come into play. And then... And the plug prices are the same as the, as the reference price yep. for PLC. Unless you are in a disaster county. So there's another plug yield that could come mm -hmm. in that we don't mm -hmm. see yet. But then every month when we see WASD, we don't know the 13, 14 marketing year cash price. In fact, here's the uh, April 9th data. You know, those three years would be about 533 corn and 1227 for soybeans. But if you elect PLC, you don't get the ARC prices. You get the reference prices. Right. And at least for corn, soybeans, even wheat, uh, wheat reference prices 550, you don't trigger a, pay a payment unless you fall below that reference price in each of the next five years. Right. And we don't really know what either one of those is going to be five years out. But right now, the corn uh, arc marketing year average would appear to be in the money. And of course, it depends on what the sure. county yields are, too. Well, let's take a look at this last slide. Because, okay. I, I mean, when I step back from it, and I'm not into this well, I'm telling everybody what to do, each individual is going right. to make their own decision. In an overview, you first separate... ARC, a revenue-based program, from PLC, a price loss coverage. And then you recognize that this is a five-year decision. I'm only going to be signing this farm up once. Uh, and it's going to be with that farm through the 2018 crop year. Mm -hmm. But then what is your bias regarding prices? I mean, if you think that we're probably going to have cash prices, but most of the next five years... We're going to be above 370. That's that weighted average, marketing year right. average. 370 corn, 840 beans, 550 wheat. If you think that we're probably going to spend most of the next five years, it's probably pulling you to an ARC program. Then you ask yourself, county, 85% of base acres, probably triggering larger payments, probably triggering those payments earlier than would a farm ARC that only pays on 65%. And again, because you have to combine all program crops on that farm, I don't think the potential payments are triggered as early or will be as right. large. Right. Because you're separating corn from beans, from wheat, from barley. So I think there's going to have to be a decision that's made, and it's going to be based on a farm and their bias on price. Can you get your landowner's signature you know, mm -hmm. by the required time frame? But separate ARC from the last point, and that would be a PLC. If you truly believe that we're going to spend most of the next five years below the reference price, again, 370 a bushel corn, 840 a bushel soybeans, 550 a bushel on wheat, then you probably want to take a look at the PLC program. You know, in its simplest form, ARC is like the old acre program. Mm -hmm. PLC is like the old countercyclical payment program mm -hmm. or the CCP. Then if you do choose the PLC, you can always add SCO mm -hmm. into your insurance mix, and that will begin in 15. I think winter wheat will probably give us our best example of how this choice is going to play out mm -hmm. between ARC and PLC and because the likelihood is there will be some interest of SCO because in general farmers don't buy up crop insurance as high as they do in much of the corn belt. Much of the corn belt farmers are using 80 or 85 percent right. levels of coverage. <clears throat> if they're using the county based program they're probably buying it up at a 90 percent level of coverage. I don't think SCO has the attractiveness when a farmer's already buying up revenue protection coverage or that area risk protection coverage that we used to call GRIP. I don't think SCL will probably have quite the attraction in the Corn Belt as it will where we see our fall seeded crops. Sounds good, Steve. Well, thank you very much for uh, giving, giving us another good introduction to this subject. Great. Thanks, Dan.